is up everyone jd here i hope you're all doing well today today i'm really excited to bring you my full review of the wee knives hyphen this one here is a gavco design really excited to pick this one up because i missed the first drop so when the second one came in i was really happy i was able to pick one of these up what we're going to be doing today is going through knife specs we'll do some size comparisons for frame of reference and then we'll jump into my thoughts and impressions so the hyphen has a 2.98 inch 20 cv steel hollow grind with a claimed hot HRC of 59 to 61, four inch titanium handles, overall length coming in just under seven inches at 6.98 inches. Claimed weight is 3.49 ounces on the knife. Let's go ahead and check the weight out. I might have to move my knife roll out of the way. All right, claimed weight again, coming in at 3.48 so that that makes sense or 3.49 sorry so that makes sense coming in at 3.4 probably actually is just a little bit lighter than the claims 3.49 inch okay let's go ahead and do some size comparisons for frame of reference we'll bring out the dimco ad 20.5 and we'll bring out the Spyderco Shaman. And as you can see, this is just smaller than both of these knives. I would actually constitute this one as a fifth pocket or companion carry size knife. Let's move these two out of the way and we'll bring out the Benchmade Bugout, which is another very friendly EDC size knife. And we'll bring out the Hogue Made Sig K320. Again, you can see this knife is much smaller than both. We'll move the bug out out of the way. We'll bring out a budget knife here for those that are more familiar with the budget knives. Here it is against the raccoon. Move the SIG out of the way and we'll bring out the Civivi Praxis. So you can see smaller knife, more of a companion serrate carry size. Let's do some thickness profile, give you an idea just how this is gonna carry and feel in the hand. First up, we'll go up against the raccoon and as you can see against the raccoon, I would call that even. Here it is against the Benchmade bug out. And you can see the bug out is just thinner overall. And we'll bring out the Demco because I still think this is thin enough to compare against the, all the smaller knives. So you can see a little bit thicker. Let's go ahead and jump into my thoughts and impressions on the knife. And I'm apparently sweating. <laughs> My hands, I'm not quite sure. I just washed my hands, so maybe that's what it was. As you can see, it has a beautiful blue stonewashed anodized finish on the handles. We have blue anodized hardware and standoffs, and then the pocket clip is done to match the actual frame of the knife. You can see there it is the 20 CV blade steel. I did pick up the stone wash finish because those tend to be closer to the 61 range that you would want 20 CV to start out at. And it has a very thin hollow ground blade. I'm not even sure I'm gonna be able to get that to show. There you go. Super, super thin hollow grind goes pretty deep too into the grind. And because it has that finger chewel in there and the plunge grind is way back here, you're gonna have lots of sharpening life. But I think this is probably not something that you're really going to hard use. As far as the lockup, you're looking at about 40% lockup. And you can double check that by the mark that it leaves when closing the knife. So I'll try to zoom in there if I can remember when I go back to edits so that you can see that access to the lock bar is pretty good because they did chamfer in here. It doesn't have any type of additional cutout, but that chamfering does allow you to get in there. Although it is a little tight for me with the larger hands, I find that it's actually easier to go in with the finger on this particular model. The action is super smooth. Now I did not cover this in the unboxing because I didn't realize it, but as I was fidgeting with the knife a little bit to get a feel for it I could hear some rattling so I checked and this pivot was actually or the standoff was actually loose 
So I actually had to tighten that down and I went ahead and checked everything else and the pocket clip had one screw that was loose also. So I checked everything else and everything else was fine, but I did want to make note that that is a little unusual. I don't see that too often from Wii Civivi or SimCut. Access to the thumb studs is really good. It stands tall so that the contoured scales do not impede you getting to that thumb stud. As you can see, really easy to access that and you can get, you can go on top and it has enough ribbing there to grab it, but I prefer to hit it just on the edge and it goes right out. Same thing with the reverse flick, no issues whatsoever. And the access to the thumb stud is good enough for lefties where you don't have to worry about that lock bar tension because you're kind of skidding right off of the pocket clip so that you're not really hitting that lock bar. And then same thing, you're touching the, for me, the pocket clip to reverse flick it. But again, I do have the larger hands. Ergos on this, plenty comfortable. With that forward finger toil, I'm able to get the first knuckle just a little bit past the knuckle in there without making contact with the blade. And that allows me to put all four fingers on the knife and then the spoon works really well. This is great for opening boxes, breaking down a small box. I, again, I really don't think I'll be hard using this to break down dozens of boxes to fit into the recycling bin, but this is going to be something that I've actually carried in the fifth pocket. I might even find a leather slip for this to drop down in the pocket. I think this is going to be more suited for that. Granted, if you live somewhere where a three inch knife law applies to you, this is obviously going to be a really good option. The steel from the factory came with a really nice edge, it, nice and slicey went through the little knife box that I tested breaking this down on with no issues whatsoever. Now, being that it is a designer knife that is being sold by Weed, the Gathco is coming in at over $250 if I recall correctly, and I'll throw that price up on the screen for you. But that is a good chunk of money for a Chinese knife that is a designer knife. At 250, there's a lot of competition out there depending on what you want. The first thing I'm gonna bring out is going to be the QSP Penguin Plus. This one is a traditional knives exclusive coming in at under $200 titanium frame and M390 with a titanium pocket clip, which is not what comes standard on the Penguin Plus. However, you do get titanium hardware and you get a unique design in all honesty with the Wii. So that is something to take into consideration when you're looking at these knives because you're getting a well-built one here from QSP. Another knife that is coming in at around that price point that I think has slightly better ergos is actually gonna be the Roxy 3. It is gonna compare exactly the same size, but you're gonna get a little bit better ergos. And the reason I say that is because you get a dedicated forward finger choil where it's blocked out on the knife. So it actually is a little bit better because I can actually get all the way up to the second knuckle because I don't have to worry about hitting the blade's edge. Whereas if I go to the second knuckle on this knife, as you can see, I'm sitting, you see where my meat's hitting the, the blade's edge there. I'm trying to get the light to hit it, but I'm at a funny angle, so I can't quite get it. But that's a little bit of the differences there. Now, as far as cutting edge, you are getting a little bit more on the Roxy 3 as well. You can tell that you just get a little bit more there on the Roxy 3. But again, the Roxy 3 is coming in at around the same price and it's the same manufacturer. If you wanted something US made or Taiwan made, I have two options for you. First, I'm gonna talk about the Demco AD 20.5. It has a little choke up point here for the first finger for the detailed work, but you actually get a full four finger grip on here. I am tight on this knife being that it is smaller, but it is again, longer. So it has the space for the extra finger. You're gonna get a little bit more cutting edge because you don't have the finger choil on there. And it's made in Taiwan, which is pretty much like getting American build quality, but it's not quite in the USA, but they're manufacturing. They've earned it by working with us and working their way up. So you're gonna see a really good build quality out of there. Another one that I'm gonna recommend that's gonna be around that same price point is actually, and I'm using this as a placeholder, it's gonna be the Manix 2 or the Shaman if you want something a little bit bigger than the Manix 2. I don't have one currently in my inventory. There's, I'm waiting for one that's about to drop to come out in order to grab it. But anyway, my point being they're USA made, 
They're not as drop shutty. You do have to use the wrist to get these to drop shut, except for the Manix 2. The Manix 2 does have really good action for Frosted Bronze washers because it has that ball cage lock um, or ball lock. Whereas with the compression locks, you do have to use a little wrist to get those to close. If you wanted the action, I would steer you back towards a ProTech, and that is going to be something like the Malibu or the Mordax, which is also coming in a little bit less than these for the standard issue one. The Mordax is gonna be a little bit bigger, and the Malibu is gonna be just slightly bigger, kind of closer to the bug out size knife that I had out here earlier and both of those are gonna come on bearings, but they're going to be button locks. So just some alternative recommendations in case you were wondering what you could get for your money as far as USA made or not Chinese made. For me, I really like this a lot. I am probably gonna keep this for the same reason that I keep the Roxy 3. I like it because it's a small knife that impresses and for something that's light to carry, these are gonna be, both of those knives are gonna be great for summer carry because they're smaller and they're not going to take a lot of weight and it could be you know my minimal carry is going to be wallet pen and knife in the summer and these will be great for that um not to say that i'm going to be in gym shorts but i also have like the not the cargo shorts but you know the khaki shorts that just have the two pockets and then you know nothing else <laughs> So it'll be great for that. Overall, it's a very recommendable knife. Very well made. I love the Gavco design. And for me, this is one I can easily see staying in the collection because I love the design. I think the size is very unique because it does work for a larger hand, which is really rare. The Roxy 3, I think, is one of the only other ones that I could say that about a knife this small that really works for me comfortably. Usually like the button lock or the Elementum 2 button lock or the Conspirator, I'm having to compromise a little bit. I got to choke up or choke back or do something to actually make it work. Whereas this, I don't feel like I really have to make it work. Hopefully this video has helped you. If it did, do me a favor, leave a like. I will be doing a disassembly of this. So make sure that you are subscribed with your notification turns on so you don't miss that. So you can see what it's like to disassemble the knife and what the internals are like. It should be very relatively easy to do because it's just going to be the two pieces of hardware the pocket clip is actually directly into the scale so it's going to be a real easy disassembly i can probably see myself throwing some skiffs on here like i did with the roxy 3. thanks for tuning in thanks to everyone out there that already leaves likes comments and is subscribed i appreciate each and every one of you i hope you have a fantastic week and until next time peace